Hey everybody, this video is going to be a guide on how to play Mars like a god. Zzzzing. Banana slam jam. Uh, Mars is one of my favorite heroes. Uh, when I was playing offlane, he was actually the hero that got me to the highest MMR I've ever been, which was 9.2k. The hero is the most picked hero in the history of DPC and competitive Dota uh, since his release. <clears throat> you know, since uh, Mars released a few years ago, he has seen more play than any other hero in competitive across all patches. And I think what makes that the case is that the hero's concept is simply reliable. Uh, he has been nerfed so many times, but what makes him so reliable is his laning stage combined with the fact that he has team fight. So we're just going to quickly discuss in theory like what makes this hero conceptually strong. So first and foremost, I think one of the most important things in the laning stage in order to be a strong laner is to have abilities that threaten the opponent and also secure creeps. Because what that does is that anytime the opponent tries to go for a last hit or anytime they try to go for a deny, uh, if you have an ability that innately threatens them, uh, it makes it much easier to control the lane. And that's like a really important aspect to understand on Mars because he's one of the few heroes in Dota, if not really the only one, that has two separate abilities that are relatively high threat and help him secure creeps. Um, that being God's Rebuke and Spear of Mars. On top of that, his ability Arena is an ability that forces most heroes in the game to buy a BKB, which in and of itself is really important. So you have, an, you have a skill set that's strong in lane, you have a skill set that often forces people to buy BKB, then you have a stun where if they don't react in time, there's no other item than BKB that prevents it. You know, Lincoln Sphere, all this kind of stuff. A Sphere of Mars is for the most part a single target stun, but it cannot be blocked by anything other than BKB. So you have to use BKB to dodge two of his spells, of which one of them you have to react to in time. And if you manage to get the BKB off in time, God's Rebuke, as you see here, is a physical damage spell that also pierces BKB in terms of the damage aspect of the spell. So all in all, Mars is an initiator, he's a team fighter, he's a strong laner, and he also is very tanky. So there's a lot of different ways that this hero can build, a lot of different ways that he can approach the lane and all that jazz. And that's what, to me, makes him super fun, but he's also kind of busted. Uh, the only time in his entire history that he's been out that he was not busted was when they nerfed his spear mana, and he basically didn't have enough mana to cast his spells. That was pretty much it. The only time in his entire history that he sucked was because he literally couldn't cast his spells. Uh, but they gave him some base mana regen, um, items like soul ring are really popular at least at the current moment so as long as the hero has no mana issues and whatever patch you're in i'm pretty confident for you that you can pick mars and do pretty well let's go ahead and get into like a brief breakdown of mars's skills and how they work because he has some wonky interactions so mars's spear is an aoe ability where if there are multiple heroes in a line it will hit all of them but it'll only spear the first one that it hits as you see here so this one, he'll still get pushed back, but it'll only hit the guy that was in front. So innately, what's really annoying for Mars is heroes with summons or illusions. Uh, summons don't prevent the spear, it's only heroes or illusions. But anything with summons or illusions can be super annoying for Mars because he effectively has a single target spell. One of Mars's worst matchups actually is Lone Druid because you cannot spear the bear. The bear is considered a summon in this case, which means that the way that Mars can kind of protect himself, the spear, cannot be used. The only time that your spear eventually hits multiple targets is once you get the Aghanim Shard. Now, while we're there, the Aghanim Shard is a nice item um, in a lot of games, but I find myself not really buying it until much later, simply because most games I feel like there's a lot of other items that really are needed for Mars, whether that's a damage item, a BKB, a blink, something like that, that is generally more important. But his spear is definitely good against a hero like TB that's going to have two copies of himself, or Manta Builders, because you're much more reliably going to stun the real hero but okay so when it comes to your combo uh but you can actually spear into summoning your arena so it's really important that your spear and god's rebuke at least in my opinion are on quick cast i don't use arena on quick cast because it's an aoe spell so if you see here I want to know exactly where I'm placing that arena, and if I have quick cast on, then I, I don't see this little circle indicator. But so when it comes to casting, I can actually spear up. 
so it's really hard to get this right. I can actually spear it first into an arena, so, oops. <laughs> Attempt number 10, and I finally landed it. Uh, that was the first one that we managed to get it. Let's try again here. Okay. So it does look like it requires basically per perfect timing. I think from the emphasis of this guide is that it is possible to make this combo work. And the biggest thing about this is that I hardly ever use this, if ever, kind of proven by the fact that it took me so many tries to get it right. This is a combo that I really only use if I feel desperate. And what I mean by desperate is that I need to spear whoever I'm killing to my arena for the damage to kill them during the spear. And they have something like a BKB or mobility spell where if I don't instantly, if I arena first and then spear, they'll be able to dodge it. But like usually say I'm like blinking on the target, it's usually what I'll do is I have a few options. I can blink arena spear, so like that, in which case, you know, it's usually pretty reliable. If I'm not worried about the opponent getting away from the arena, if they have no way to actually escape the arena, then it's oftentimes better to rebuke them first for the slow, because it's a 40% slow. So you do this, you slow them, realign yourself, because most people are going to try to dodge the spear, and then you spear them. Um, the only other thing you can do is if they have BKBs, you can uh, spear them before you arena. So you can do this, and then if you want the damage still, you can place it on the edge. And then, you know, learn to trap them right there. That's for like a little bit of extra damage before they come out of their BKB. It also prevents their teammates from helping them out. One thing that's really big to consider is exactly where the rest of their team is. So say this Terrorblade's right here, his teammates are behind him. You would likely want to place the arena like this so they can't help him in team fights, And then spear him this way if possible. A lot of times if you spear him like that way towards his team, they might be able to save him. They might be able to even just use like a four staff or something like that. So it's really important to know that if that the arena has a cooldown on it and that's right now there's no way to get out of it vertically what that means is that any ability that jumps you up in the air used to get you out of arena but now it doesn't they change that but what does get you out of the arena is the fact that there's a cooldown on the the damage instance of the arena so what can be the way you can get out of arena is on heroes with any sort of mobility spell such as mirana is that there's a cooldown on the damage instance of arena so if mirana walks into it and then leaps she can get out you saw there but like mirana can't actually leap out but if she takes damage first then she can leap as you saw there Similar with somebody like Timbersaw. Any mobility spell in the game for the most part. If I try to timber chain out of the arena, it's not going to let me. But, see there? So it looks like as Timbersaw, you have to timber chain, walk a bit, and then get hit. So, it's like walk, and then you get out. So every mobility spell in the game can get you out of arena um, if you let yourself get hit first. Also heroes like Storm Spirit can jump through, Morphling with Waveform, um, anybody with magic immunity, so Jug and Lifestealer. Mostly heroes that can innately get out of arena are Mars' worst matchups um, in the game itself. Heroes with built-in magic immunity, heroes with mobility spells like PL's Doppelganger are super annoying for him. I'd honestly say Mars's worst matchups are actually the Spirits. Uh, Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit, and Void Spirit. Specifically from the mid lane, all three of these heroes can get out of arena without itemizing. And you also have to like spear them before arena-ing because they likely will dodge if you try to blink arena and then spear. One cool thing about arena is that spells can be cast through it. So like if I arena this, this Marana, you can arrow me but this marana and any other right clickers can't right click me if i'm arena they will get blocked by the arena itself all attacks in and out get blocked by this arena so if i arena this marana and he's on the inside and he tries to right click me he also can't so 
sometimes arena can be simply used against ranged right clickers that are you just need to prevent them from right clicking one of your teammates so if i have a teammate timbersaw who's getting focused by this marana i can just separate the two of them with arena to save him effectively that is one of the few defensive usages of arena so the reason why i'm going through all these options for you is because or like these combos these way of uh casting spells it's because you play these team fights as well as pickoffs the exact same way with Mars. What's cool about Mars is that his team fight spells and pickoff spells are the exact same spells. And the way you use them is the exact same. It really just comes down to what heroes are on the enemy team and the guy that you're going on. In general, BKB is Mars's biggest issue. Once BKBs come out, it's really hard to reliably use your arena. So if there are BKBs on the other team, what I'll likely do is use my arena as a way to zone both supports, to get on top, to blink on top of both supports because they usually don't have BKBs and lock them down in the back, kind of like isolate them from the rest of the team. And I'm totally willing to trade my arena for supports. So the thing about Mars's kit, is that his arena can be wasted pretty easily for all the reasons that I've just mentioned. If somebody just escapes, it's over. If you miss a spear, say your team is focusing this terror blade and you try to spear him, say your team is focusing this terror blade and you want to stun him against this tree, right? And you're like, hey guys, like we're going to focus him down and I'm going to stun him against this tree. And then you just miss. And suddenly the terror blade is saved this is a really important thing to emphasize to you guys because mars's kit while being super powerful is high potential of griefing uh your teammates you have to be very careful with your spear usage because your spear is either a three second disable for your entire team to focus the guy or it's saving the opponent so one thing that's really important to note is whenever you're going from high ground to low ground the spear will not impale so you see here he just gets speared to the low ground but if you spear him from low ground to high ground, he'll get impaled. So when it comes to like interactions on the map, Roche Pit, it'll spear him to every tree, but low grounds and high grounds. Just have a understanding of these things. And if you have a question about each individual instance, you should definitely just try it out at a lobby. It's something you kind of get a feel for. Certain walls that it'll hit and certain walls that it won't. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to talk about Bulwark. So Bulwark's a pretty cool spell to learn to toggle. Uh, that's the most important part about it. It's the reverse of Bristleback, but instead of it being all damage, it's just auto attacks. So in terms of learning to use it, you tend to be very good against right clickers that are ranged. So like if Terrorblade is attacking you and you want to retreat, you can just do this, you know, and run away. It locks the, the direction that you're facing, right? So if I want to reface, so I would do this, you know, and then undo it and reset my facing direction. And also, what a lot of people don't realize is that if you read here, it says when you activate your passive, it redirects 70% of attack projectiles aimed at Mars's allies. So if we're going to attack the creep and I do this, 70% of his attacks are actually going to go towards me. So if the enemy carry or whoever you're laning against is ranged and they're trying to get CS, you can actually consider leveling this level two, sometimes, you know, level three or four, and toggling it on and off when they're going for last hits in order to actually prevent them from getting the last hits. You can save your teammates when one of your teammates is getting focused by like a TA or something of the like, and you just blink in and push E. Say these creeps are my teammates, I can do this, you know, save them. And suddenly Terrorblade's gonna stop hitting my teammate. I've done that multiple times. So this spell can be used in that way. Um, if you're looking to push high ground and you're dealing with multi-shot of Glyph, this is usually pretty later on into the game where you have tanky items as well as some sort of sustain. You can actually prevent the opponent from killing your creeps with Glyph by using your Bulwark. That's another use of it. He's really great for securing high grounds by preventing the multi-shot from glyph actually killing your creeps for skill build is quite simple uh, we'll go in more depth during the game itself when i show you guys a replay but we're just going to talk about exactly what you'll do most games as mars and you'll learn to adjust fine tune it over time uh god's rebuke level one uh helps you secure cs and lower mana cost good for trading in lanes where you're sustaining you'll take your bulwark level two in lanes where it's you're not really getting right clicked all that much, you're going to take spear level two. By level seven, you will almost always have four points in spear 
one point God's Rebuke, and one point Bulwark with Arena at level six. My skill build every game eventually turns into 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one at level 10. Max Spear first, then Max Rebuke, one point Bulwark, and then Arena. His level 10 talents, at least at the time that I made this video, are quite underwhelming. Uh, so when it comes to skill builds, I always prioritize my skills over these talents. If I feel like my Bulwark isn't very good that game, like for whatever reason, they just don't really have ranged right-click damage, all actually take stats over maxing out bulwark because if you look at the front damage reduction it's 40 percent at level one and it only goes up by 10 percent from there so yes it's worthwhile if they have some ranged right clickers or just right clickers in general but if they're lacking physical damage in the mid game then i will take stats over bulwark and i firmly believe stats are better than these two talents most of the time as well at level 15 i almost always take the god's rebuke talent it's just too good. It goes from 10 seconds to six seconds. Usually at this stage in the game, your God's Rebuke is actually your way to farm. So uh, you want to hold on to Spear for heroes. So it lowers that cooldown. I mean, you can kind of spam it on creep waves and it's more damage in fights too. It's just better. I think it's just simply a better talent. At level 20, I pretty much always take the Spear of Marsh stun. Very rarely do I need that extra 10% damage reduction. I'd rather just have my offensiveness be more potent than my defense. And at level 25, uh, the Arena of Blood grants HP regen seems nice in theory. I would really only go it if I'm against something like a Venomancer or like a Necro or like some hero that clearly kills my heroes over time. The problem is at level 25, I feel like most deaths are fast. People are dying very fast. They're getting bursted. A lot of heroes have a lot of damage at that point. So the majority of games, I don't take the HP regen and I decide to take the God's Rebuke crit. Maybe against like a Zeus or something, some hero that you're really trying to sustain against. But Arena of Blood is not innately a defensive spell. So it seems kind of weird to use it to heal your teammates. There are times where you will arena to like protect a teammate who's getting focused and like try to isolate the opponent from being able to focus them, but very rarely. Let's go ahead and get into an actual replay from who I believe to be the most defining Mars player in the entire world, and that's Amar. So we're gonna talk about some of his little habits and lane, item builds, all this type of theory crafted stuff and what he does to get an advantage. So first and foremost, before I get into this replay, matchup wise, Mars really relies on booting heroes out of lane at level six. That's like a big part of the hero. So any hero that he can't really kill is generally some of his worst matchups. But these heroes usually aren't even that bad of matchups for him, as long as his support is an aggressive ranged hero. Mars pairs by far the best with four position ranged heroes. Please no Mars Earth Shakers, Mars Earth Spirits, anything like this. Mars is already a kill hero. He doesn't need a kill threat four. He wants a four that likes to right click the opponent, nuke from afar, and consistently threaten the opponent. So you can have Marana's, Grimstrokes, Hoodwinks, Lena's if she's ever played as four, Snapfire, Weaver. This kind of stuff is what you want to pick Mars with. Please, you know, don't first pick Mars in your pubs as an offlaner and proceed to get griefed by your four positions pick. Don't pick him with Pudge. Don't pick him with Earthshaker. Mars is a hero that wants to consistently pressure the wave, never really wants to be left alone because he almost wins every 2v2. Both of his spells aggressively are good against 2v2s. He doesn't ever want to be 1v2, ever. Uh, so really important aspect of Mars that we cannot skip over. But yeah, his worst matchups are ones that he can't boot out of lane at six, but most of these matchups he'll still win anyway. Um, I think his worst matchup right now is actually CK, and that's just because CK can threaten to kill him pretty easily. He turns into an illusion hero, which we talked about why he would be good. And he also has innate sustain against Mars's constant harass. So Mars is a kill hero that likes to whittle you down in the laning phase and then eventually kill you. That's kind of how he works. Um, his God's Rebuke spam whittles you down and then eventually his spear plus God's Rebuke combo kills you. Uh, if I had to say, if you're against a good player on the hero, Morphling's probably Mars's worst matchup because he's a magic damage based right clicker. And he also has an ability that gets him out of arena and it's really hard to kill him with arena because of morph or attribute shift. Okay, so when it comes to starting items, it's pretty much always massing stats. You can decide between Quelling Blade or not based on the base damage of the opponent carry. Uh, in this case, it's Wraith King, pretty high base damage. He goes Quelling Blade, I agree. If the carry is like an Agi hero, like Spectre with really low base damage, I'll oftentimes skip the Quelling Blade and mass stats. You can either go this type of build or you can go gauntlet circlet gauntlet circlet with no regen and then fair yourself tangos and a bracer with your 
initial gold from runes and as well as your first courier usage. The only thing you differ in terms of how many stats you buy is how the lane is going after the first wave or two. That's pretty much the only difference. It's like maybe one bracer or just soul ring or double bracer, triple bracer. What I'm going to say to you guys is this. The better the lane is going, the more stats you buy on Mars. The worse the lane is going, the less stats you buy on Mars. There's some games for it. You'll see it very rarely, but I'm just telling you if you were to never build these items, it would probably be for the best than trying to like find the right time to build them. But okay, long overdue. Let's get into this replay. We got a ATF, probably one of the most iconic Mars players in the entire world. So at the start of the lane on Mars, I almost always try to aggro defensively to my range creep. And the reason why is because Mars is insanely good at threatening the opponent when they go for the range creep. He's insanely good at preventing them from getting it or at least taking a lot of damage. He's also in a lane against a silencer who's kind of like an annoying five position hero. So we're trying to um, remove as much aggro as possible. So there's kind of two ways to go with Mars. You're either super at the advantage level one, where you drag to that range and prevent them from getting it, or you're against a stronger lane like this, where you drag to your range, which makes the lane pull back, you use your God's Rebuke for the one melee creep, and the lane's pushing into you. That's really the only two versions of laning that I ever see on Mars. So notice that what happens with Mars is, whenever his God's Rebuke is available again, you're going to see it right here, he's going to walk aggressively past the creep, such that if the opponent were to contest it, he'd be ready to God's Rebuke. That's something you need to constantly be on the lookout if you're learning Mars, watching Mars players, is that every time God's Rebuke is up, act like it. Make the opponent fearful. If they're going to go for a creep that you're near, when you have God's Rebuke available, rebuke the creep, rebuke them, and then hit them like three times afterwards, you know? Use the slow to your advantage. So they just back off, right? In this case, he just doesn't use it. But constantly threatening that is really important. And notice what he does when the opponent goes for a range creep. Bad Mars players will drag to their range creep like this and then try to deny the range creep. No, no, no. No new Mars players here, guys. You drag to your range, and then you threaten. Notice he's threatening, and then he hits the opponent, and then if the opponent stayed, he'd keep hitting them. In this case, Tomato backed off, and he got the deny. That's a really important skill set to use on Mars, because there's really not much the opponent can do about it. Getting two-man gods rebukes is always good. Always good if you can get it. Super efficient spell for how much damage it does, in terms of how much mana cost and cooldown and all that stuff. So he ferries himself a full bracer with a little bit of extra regen. This is very standard. An extra set of tangos, maybe a salve, just depending on the lane. But I pretty much always fly myself a bracer with one set of regen um, compared to what I started with. Getting the lane near your tower on Mars is ultra important because you're not the strongest laner level one through four. You're strong, but you can't really use it to be aggressive. You can only really use it to like secure the fact that you're getting CS, right? He's still free farming this lane, but he's not actually threatening Tomato at this point. He's kind of just winning the CS battle. So I want you guys to treat the first three levels of Mars as win the CS battle. Make it so that you are ahead by a few experience points, a little bit of net worth by level four or five, and then the opponent is gonna get the dick, okay? They're gonna get dicked real hard. Do not overplay your hero. Do not feel like just because I tell you this hero is a really strong laner that you're supposed to act like it in the first level one to four. Notice how Amar has played incredibly defensively, except for when Tomato goes for range creeps and he's ready to God's rebuke him. That's it. Really important to note this, okay guys? In lanes like this, I would even consider taking my uh, third spell, um, but uh, notice how he's also considering it. He hasn't even leveled a skill yet. Because at this point in the lane, you're not sure whether or not you're looking to be aggressive or whether or not you're looking to win the sustain battle. Bulwark is a very good sustain spell um, because it just makes all of your HP regen that much more effective, while Spear obviously locks down the kills. So sometimes you don't even know yet. It's not even super obvious. The lane's constantly pushing into his tower. Make sure your four position blocks the small camp if possible. Because as long as the lane's here, you're good to go. Um, and this is exactly what Mars does. Okay, in this case, he realizes there's an opportunity to be aggressive. Tomato overstepped a bit. He uses his God's Rebuke, or excuse me, he gets the Shackle from Wind Ranger, and they commit to getting a kill. Uh, if the lane's ever near your tower like this, you pretty much wait for the opponent to walk a little bit too far. You'll kind of learn where that is as you play more and more Mars. And then you just punish them. And then you just keep the lane near your tower. Rinse and repeat. 
This is really fundamental stuff on Mars. He plays the lane similarly to Slardar, where he wants to chill and sustain farm, and then go for all-in kills um, if the opponent oversteps. So in this lane, since he's winning, uh, he already had bought two bracers, but since he's winning, he bought three bracers. Uh, I'm just re-emphasizing to you guys that like you don't have to buy three bracers, but if your lane's going really well, the better it's going, the more stats you buy. Oftentimes here, I would buy a wand or a soul ring um, components. And the thing is that boots are nice, but in terms of being aggressive, Mars doesn't really need boots most of the time, especially when your four position also has a stun. Also a big part of Mars that sometimes is if my opponent, if my four position doesn't have a stun, but is really strong, something like Weaver, I'm very prone to buying a Orb of Venom just because it allows me to chase them down without having to commit. Uh, a lot of heroes I'll buy Orb of Venom against if they have a defensive spell, something like Faces Void with Time Walk, PL with Doppelganger. And the reason why is these heroes are hard to spear reliably. So if I buy an Orb of Venom, I can actually make Make them use these spells to get away from me get away from my god's rebuke because that extra bit of slow without me having to use spear so that's really important to note and i want to emphasize this point 10 times over okay guys are you ready 10 times over do not use spear unless you are killing the opponent or they are killing you i want you to watch as many amar replays as you have to to feel convinced about this spear does not get used to secure cs unless you plan to right click the opponent like three times or more after spearing them, okay? There's a lot of reasons for this. You'll realize it if you do it. The biggest part about spear is it's such a threat and it's such a high mana cost that by having it go on cooldown, by using the mana, it's really bad. So that is my number one laning tip on Mars. Only use spear for all in kills or to save your teammate or to save yourself. It is a huge investment from Mars to use his spear. So notice how he's never really pushing the lane. He's literally just keeping it near his tower as much as possible. When the opponent walks up, he gods rebukes him and gets an extra right click in. The idea of Mars is that you remain as close to full HP as possible, and every little trade ends up like this. Notice how both him and Tomato were full HP. Now he's full HP, and Tomato's missing 200 HP. Now let's just rinse and repeat that as many times as necessary to kill the guy. That's how Mars operates, guys. So in that case, he used Spear to break a salve. That's a little bit different, but... Uh... Yeah, that, that, that was a very niche case there. Same thing here. Notice how he's threatening right clicks now that he's got the triple bracer. Uses God's Rebuke again. And he gets level 6 and solo kills Tomato. So that was like a, a very calculated play by Amar. Where even if he wasn't getting 6 here. Like even if Amar was not leveling up to 6 right this moment. Even without the arena, this play alone would have been really nice, right? It's just that if he wasn't leveling up to six, he wouldn't continue chasing here. So the biggest emphasis about this whole thing is he's wearing you down, wearing you down, and then just solo kill. That's exactly how Mars works when he's winning the lane. No need to overplay the spear combo, but this case specifically um, absolutely hits his timing perfectly. You guys don't need to do that. Um, but at this stage in the game, around the time that you get arena, you usually want to have a soul ring. Like in a lane that you're winning especially, it's really important to have that soul ring because at this point, you're going to start having mana problems. So Amar, being like a god tier Mars player, he ferried out the... He, he barely had enough mana for his combo, first off. It's really important that you have mana for your combo. Notice how he's been preserving his mana all lane. And then with the courier that he flew his soul ring, he flew himself a clarity knowing that he was going to use all of his mana. And then now he's ready to go, right? So this is the dream on Mars. You boot the the opponent carry out a lane with your first arena usage and this is something i commonly do on mars as well and that's that what makes mars so powerful is that when he's full hp or close to it and almost full mana this hero is one of the scariest heroes in dota so notice what amar does here right he's super strong like uh in terms of he's level six and tomato's level four but he's kind of running low on resources so he ends up using all of his mana to clear the creeps before wraith king comes back and he's like, okay, I killed you, used all my resources, instantly reset. This is like God tier efficiency. And if you, the closer you guys can get to doing this, the better, okay? Notice how he doesn't use spells to push in the lane when he's winning. That's super important because if you use, spe if you use spear to clear the wave, then as a carry, I'll feel safe to actually farm the wave in front of you. So at this point, he pushes it um, because he knows the opponent's gone. Um, he's like, oh, they're not here. I'll go ahead and use it. Um, but this is what I look to do on Mars. 
is all right, I have several options when I push in the creep wave. I either plan to dive whoever shows. If it was the silencer, he probably would have just killed them. Or in this case, Wraith King, maybe not an easy kill because he, he likely has his ult. I'll look to simply push lane into tower, force somebody like the Wraith King to come back. And then from there, I'm either yoinking their jungle creeps like he did here, or I'm looking to walk towards mid with my arena. So this is a reasonable time in the game to look to walk towards mid. I usually won't walk towards mid unless I have to, like I feel really bad in the lane that I'm in, like I'm not in a perfect game. He's in a really good game, right? He's ha he's owning. Also, a combination of that and the fact that he doesn't have phase boots yet. Before Blink, when Ma when Mars is just walking around the map, phase boots are pretty important just because you don't want to hinder your own farm in order to walk around too much. So notice how he's just yoinking the carries camps at this point. But he's continuously laning despite owning. A lot of people, I think, in the offlane feel pressure to gank, right, when they're winning. Mars only really ganks if he's losing. He doesn't want to gank. It's not what he wants to do. So notice how he cuts the wave and drags it into creeps. This is a really good efficiency for Mars. You don't do a ton of damage to towers, so you're not nearly as high priority about actually hitting the tower itself. And notice how the only time he actually left his lane when he was winning is right after this tower died. This tower just died. So with Mars, when I finally kill that tower, I'm kind of just looking for opportunities. I know this is OG, so it's gonna be much more coordinated than a pub. His teammates are smoking towards the top half of the map and he's already got his carry ready to defend. What I'm thinking when I see this, if I'm Mars looking to be a defensive on the map is, is my team kind of set up to defend this tower? Because Mars often doesn't have solo kill potential, at least not in team fights, but with like a little bit of extra oomph, a little bit of extra damage, this hero will kill almost anybody in the game. So he sees his teammates setting up, and once he kills the tower, he's immediately TPing in, and he gets a really nice kill. So the biggest thing about Mars now is you're in two different modes. Uh, your ultimate is available uh, or your ultimate is not. Very rarely will I ever go to fights or even like look to join my team if my ultimate is down. Uh, if my teammates want to come to me and gank, that's a little bit different, but it's like, otherwise I'm just looking to push out the wave real quick with my spells and then farm the jungle nearby. Did not connect to his team a single moment when his ultimate was on cooldown, but now that his ultimate is available, he's not forcing anything. He's not immediately charging at the opponent. He's just more prone to putting himself near his teammates, which is... Just a general concept that if you guys can master that in theory is really great. Because he's still farming. Notice that, right? He doesn't feel forced to do anything. But now he's like, oh, there's a guy here. Like, go get him, guys, you know? Um, in this case, the global saves him. But no rush here. Clear some creep waves. As Mars, since your two spells are so efficient at clearing creep waves, never leave an area without clearing a creep wave as Mars. Do not leave any lane without quickly pushing it and then leaving. So his option was to clear that wave and immediately join his team or to clear the next wave and then join your team. Now the thing about this is it really boils down to how many waves do you think you can get without dying as well as how soon does your team need you. He feels pretty strong because they're really far ahead and his team is not necessarily in an area to like kill somebody at this current moment. So he's going to decide to go for another wave. But really what dictates your rotations as Mars is clearing that wave, deciding whether whether or not you're going for another one and then going okay and but he still has arena so he's gonna run to his team if he had used arena here he probably would go here right he'd probably just go farm the creep wave where he just ganked to just like he did top he defended his tower with arena and then he farmed nearby that would most likely be what happened if he used arena right here but since he didn't use arena he's gonna continue running towards his team and completely isolate the enemy carry it's really impossible to help people at this stage in the game when they're locked into arena. And the biggest decision once you get this soul ring phase boots combo is whether or not you go blink or whether or not you go BKB. So notice how with this method, he just places himself on the map aggressively. Um, the big thing about this is it's even better to buy BKB, not only for all the reasons I said about Mars, but if you have another hero on your team that can start fights. So in this case, the Wind Ranger Shackle is pretty decent. Storm Spirit's like a very reliable initiator. So if you're not like the only stun on your team, it's really good to consider going BKB as well. So in this case, look at the way he plays Mars with BKB. He doesn't even see anybody here. Look at his vision, right? He doesn't even see anybody. But what I would do if I buy BKB in a pub is I would tell whoever on my team offers damage. In this case, it's like the supports. And I would just say, hey guys, follow me. 
and just walk aggressively. If nobody follows you, then worst case scenario, you TP out, right? The reminder about that. But just walking across the opponent's side of the map aggressively uh, is really the best thing you can do when you buy a BKB. Um, so in terms of uh, uh, logical item progression, the Chad Mars build, if we're talking like just raw default, two bracers, wand, soul ring, phase, blinker BKB. This is like the default, I'm a Giga Chad Mars build. Okay, like I'm having a dope game. I want to carry it. I'm also being impactful for my team. Followed up by Deso into Satanic, Strength Blink, Refresher. That should be your final inventory. Any other build is an adjustment. This is the ideal way to play Mars, right? Like this is how you want to play Mars. The game just looks easier because he's 5-0 and 8 and they're stomping. But the idea is sound. Between ultimates, you push waves. You buy items that let you run on the opponent's side of the map. And then you either buy the survivability items to lock up the fact that you're never going to die, or you continue buying damage items to match the opponent's tankiness going up and up and up and still being able to threaten to kill them, right? This game has been really easy so far because the opponent doesn't have BKBs yet, which means that his arena is a guaranteed kill. I'd say this game's mainly over. So in the game you're currently watching of me, this is a disaster, as you can see here. I'm actually a mid-Mars, but the way mid-Mars plays the map is quite similar. What I basically look at with Mars when I'm losing is using my arena to maybe get some uh, Hail Mary kills. And then because I'm losing, I have less resources to work with, which means that I'm going to have to go to base a lot more. That's, that's like a big part of losing with Mars. So notice here that uh, I'm looking to wrap around behind the opponent. I'm happy to use Arena to get solo kills. And then similar to what we saw before, where I just want to push the creep waves, use all my resources. We saw the same thing on um, Amar. You just push out the creep wave one more time and leave. So I'm going to quickly push a wave and die because I'm a noob. The only difference between me and Omar here is that when he was winning, he stayed on the map. You know, he'd clear two creep waves and then he'd go clear more camps so he could accelerate his farm. When you're losing, you don't have enough mana and resources to do that. So you clear like two creep waves, go back to base and reset. Still buying similar items, soul ring around this time. But usually if I'm behind as Mars, I like to take the super dangerous farm on the map. That's like what I would rather do because you're really good at clearing it very fast. So notice how instead of playing around top, because we're losing by so much, I'm actually playing the super dangerous area of the map. And, you know, one guy walks in by himself and gets killed. I'm happy to use Arena to try to get kills. You know, if that guy wasn't there, I'd just be clearing the wave. In this game, I'm working on a Blink Dagger rather than a BKB. If I'm behind, I buy the item that keeps me alive. Uh, that sounds similar to when I'm winning, but in this game, for instance, BKB doesn't do shit because I'm against Black Hole, I'm against Rupture, I'm against Omni Slash. When I'm losing as Mars, I think, what can I do to avoid the opponent and carefully select my fights with Arena? Big difference conceptually there, just to make sure we're on the same page. Every time the enemy team tries to do something to my team, I'm totally down to react. It's the same thing as before. But instead of like doing it for map control, we're just doing it to survive, you know, uh, compared to what Amar was doing. Notice how I'm resetting when my arena is on cooldown, and then I'm looking to be ready to go back out on the map when my arena is available again. The closer you can get these timings, the better. You'll kind of get a feel for like how long you should be farming. Notice how I spent one jungle camp there farming, and that was because if you look at the timer, I'm about to be back out on the map with arena again. So against a hero like Jug, I'm not going to arena first because he can spin. So in this case, I stun him first, right? I just blink stun. And now I get the arena off to try to like isolate him. And he actually gets bursted. So that was cool. Whenever you have situations like this where you've already casted spells, I try to zone the opponents away from each other. So a lot of people I think by default would run at the Void Spear here to try to like hit him with his team. But I'm just trying to keep the opponents from, from going together. So I zone him first. Look how evasive we are right now, right? Just kiting in and out. That's what Mars turns into when you're losing. Is just like this in and out kite, uh, pick and choose your fights carefully type of thing. So same idea, uh, cautiously pushing waves when uh, I'm not ready to fight. Uh, even though I have arena here, I'm trying to finish my item. So you have to kind of like line up your timings to be a, as strong as possible at once. In my Mars game, he fought before his BKB, but that's because he was winning really hard. But when you're losing, you know, you have to be much more selective about fights. We first identify the people that we cannot kill. 
with our arena combo. So like I see this guy, he's got Aegis, he's got Spin, he's got Sanjin Yasha. Ignore that guy. We want to try to fight as far away from that guy as possible because we have to treat him as the guy that's also going to like threaten us when we try to arena the other people, right? So in this case, we smoke up, run away from that guy. And I'm, I'm looking for the supports because they're reliable, right? I can rely, if I can spear the Void Spirit, that's fantastic. So that's what we do. We get the Void Spirit. He didn't really look ready. And we get two kills. Fantabulistic XP Aladocious here. Despite it being behind, we use our Power Spike to about the best of our capabilities. Um, in this case, we want to be very careful because the Jug has Aegis um, of overcommitting against Enigma. We see Enigma on the side. Notice how before when we had used our, all of our spells, we ran at the Grimstroke. And now when we've used most of our spells, we run at the Enigma. We're trying to like make sure we don't clump up. Because when we have Arena, we want everyone clumped up. Because Arena is like super powerful. But when we're not, when we don't have Arena, we don't really want to be clumped up. Especially against heroes like Enigma. So bring him down on the side. Fantastic. And overall, the issue with this game was I ended up buying Refresher without a BKB. So I can tell you, that's the first time I've gotten to that stage in the game without a BKB. Things really don't change later on in the game. Uh, the only way this hero's execution changes is that you get two arenas. The reason why Refresher is so important on Mars, at least if the item is good, is because you kind of just have to start fights by chucking out all your spells. There's like not a better way to do it. If you've noticed, pretty much all these fights I've let off with Blink, Spear, Arena, God's Rebuke. Like I just use everything. There's very few exceptions to this. There's just very rarely is that a good thing to do to hold on to your spells. And what Refresher does is it lets you do that and it doesn't give the opponent a feeling of safety if they manage to barely live or if you miss, you know, the refresher makes it so that you can do that and still fight afterwards with full capacity. That's really all that changes about Mars later on in the game. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Mars guide. It's one of my favorite heroes. Go get some MMR with him. I think you guys can understand, hopefully, watching this guide, why this hero has a low pub win rate, despite the fact that he's considered incredibly strong and competitive. A lot of ways to mess him up, but a lot of ways to optimize and have fun and visualize his teamfight contribution in map play. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.